Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. So in this lecture we are going to understand in general about a verification methodology. So we are going to take a quick look at some of the verification challenges such that we understand the importance of uh, verification methodology. We are also going to learn in general about what is a verification methodology, why do we need a standard verification methodology and what all a verification methodology should provide. So we are going to learn about these basic concepts before we start uh, learning more about specifically the OBM or UBM verification methodology. So we will start with taking a quick uh, look at some of the verification challenges most of which you should be already familiar. So some of the challenges in verification or some of the challenges for a verification engineer is to find all the bugs as early as possible and as fast as possible in the overall design life cycle. Uh, so especially this kind of important with increasing complexity in designs. So you have a limited set of time available during your design life cycle. You'll have and also your limited resources, both in terms of the persons or engineers, as well as the actual compute time or the compute machines. So within that limited time and resources, you're supposed to find all the bugs early and fast. And this is a because this is one of the big challenge, especially with the designs in getting more and more complex uh, in time. So there are always like more possible scenarios to test and available time and resources. So that's why it's a challenge to find all the bugs possible in the design life cycle. And, uh, and as most of you know, the cost of a bug escape from the design to the silicon is very costly because you have to respin the whole design. So with that understanding about the verification challenges, uh, what do we do? So that's why verification engineers always continuously tries to improve on the process as well as tools. So why do we need a standard methodology? Does standard methodology address some of these challenges? So we are going to see some of those in the following slides. So traditional methods doesn't really scale up or enable reuse across verification for complex designs. So this is one of the reasons we uh, look for a standard methodology. So what do I mean by traditional methodology, uh, traditional methods? So traditional methods, what, what I mean by traditional methods is like prior to say system Verilog, we had like Verilog based, uh, Verilog based verification for designs in Verilog. Uh, what we used to do is to kind of create a module around the top level design module, try to create set of tasks and functions and then try to implement a lot of directed test scenarios or even try to create like limited scenarios. Now a lot of these methods were like very focused on that specific design. So if you were trying to traditionally verify a block level design, you might implement a block level test bench that is like very specific to that block and if you were to kind of uh, create a test bench around a system level or an SOC level design you would probably build a system level test bench and then try to implement a lot of uh, traditional methods and how we can verify that system on chip. There weren't any real focus on uh, focus on whether some of the effort that you put in a block level verification or a chip level verification were focus for enabling to be reused across different blocks or across across like block to chip level or from chip to system level verification. So this works in traditional methods, uh, traditional designs especially when the complexities was much less. But as verification is increasingly becoming more critical especially with complex designs, you cannot afford to have like traditional methods uh, which needs like unlimited resources and time for doing block level and chip level and verification across projects. Also as the design complexity increase we move transition from a directed testing to a more constrained random testing approaches because we only had like limited set of time to cover all the resource all these scenarios to be verified. Now again building a constrained random test bench is complex and time consuming. So you wouldn't want to really spend time and effort in building a constrained random test bench specifically for a block or specifically for a chip. Uh, so that's why uh, some of the complex projects demands that verification engineer try to con divide the problem and then conquer, thus trying to solve some of these complexities. So that's when we started thinking about 
how do we uh, how do we reuse the effort that we spend on a block level verification to a chip level verification and how do we also reuse some of the effort that we put in a specific project verification that can be carried to a next set of project and then you also think about reusing from say a specific simulator to another simulator or from a company to another company which is like especially when you have like ip based designs so so yeah that's where that's what i meant by there's a need to speed up the overall process and increase efficiency as we move from project to project and that's specifically when we want to use a standard methodology which can address some of these uh, problems so let's see what is a verification methodology so a verification methodology defines a set of standards or process that enables efficient verification that will enable your verification productivity to increase so specifically a verification methodology should address the following aspects it should address the automation uh, it should also address abstraction and reuse so by automation what i meant is you wouldn't want to do a lot of uh, task manually across projects or across like different levels of verification you'd want to automate as much of the of that possible you would also want to abstract a lot of information you wouldn't want to really spend a lot of effort in writing pin level or signal level uh, signal level monitors or drivers you would want to abstract a lot of information such that it will enable eventually reusing across projects or across like block to chip level verification uh, and you would also want to have like interoperability you wouldn't want like a set of verification process that works on say a set of tool or a simulator and then that doesn't work on another set of simulators or tools so you want to have a process that kind of works across different tools or vendors and then definitely you would want to address the quality aspects you because finally you want to find the bugs early in the design life cycle so let's see what a methodology should provide so since a methodology should address all the problems that we saw in previous slide so the methodology should provide a standard to enable reuse so it should have a it should enable reuse across abstractions uh, what i mean is like across a block level to a chip level to a system level as well as it should also enable you to reuse across projects or across companies within the industry so continuing on what a methodology should provide so a methodology should provide a layered approach to enable the division of skills and development so what i mean is like uh, the methodology should allow you to divide your task and then enable like more reuse using a layered approach so instead of building a complete verification test bench you should allow building different verification ips and some of these verification ips can be reused and configured in say different block level environments or chip level environments or these verification ips can be reused across projects the methodology should also provide an a uh, the layered approach should also provide you a capability to separate your stimulus from the real test bench structure such that the stimulus part of the development can be done by somebody with skills on that and the test bench structures the components can be built by somebody with skills on that the methodology should also provide a way in which capability in which if you are writing a new code like assertions or coverage points or checkers or test cases or whether you are reusing some of the checkers and test cases so there should be capability of either writing a new code or reusing some of the existing code and continuing the methodology should also provide you a consistent approach specifically in terms of naming conventions how do you configure the different verification ips for example how do you configure the number of agents how this how the verification ips are connected to dut whether an agent is active or passive uh, etc so these are specifically important because if everybody def everybody develops say their own verification ips with their own uh, defined ways of configuring the ips or their own defined ways of connecting them to the duties then some of these verification ips cannot be uh, connected together when you want to build like a uh, by like a higher level verification environment so it's kind of important that methodology provides a consistent approach in all of these 
and the methodology should also provide a well-defined generation and simulation phases some of the examples that OVM UVM uses is like build connect the pre-run run and post-run phases so especially these are important uh, if we are building class-based test benches so again like you wouldn't want like everybody who is building test bench to define their own different phases so the methodology should provide a consistent approach for that and what more a methodology should provide finally after all we do all of these to find bugs so methodology should provide a power to find the bugs fast so some of the ways in which it can help is like since since we kind of allow a layered approach to divide all the development uh, we should be able to develop test benches much faster and since we, uh, we allow separation of stimulus the methodology should also give you a good control on stimulus in terms of observability and debuggability and the methodology should also provide you mentor or tool independence so whatever test benches you test benches or test bench components that you develop on a specific vendor or a tool should work seamlessly on another vendor or a tool and the methodology should also ideally provide you some capabilities for effective verification management in terms of say planning progress and completion so those are some of the general uh, general aspects of what a methodology is and what a methodology should provide and we'll see a quick history of how the different uh, standard methodologies evolved so back in uh, back, back in maybe around 95's time frame when system error log language got introduced there were several verification languages like Vera, in Vera and Specman or E in addition to system error log language so each of the language had their own methodology for example Vera from Synopsys had a methodology called RVM which defined a set of processes and a set of class libraries based on how the Vera language should be used and on the other side specman or e language had something called erm from cadence which uh, defined a set of processes or class libraries on how specman should be used and when system analog language started becoming more and more popular each of the three major vendors like synopsis cadence and mentor came up with their own methodologies known as vmm from synopsis avm from mentor and urm from cadence and sometime later they realized you need like more interoperability or seamless uh, seamless functionality across different vendors so uh, the mentor and cadence uh, methodologies merged onto an OVM while Synopsys still continued with their uh, VMM version 1.2 and sometime a few years back these two methodologies are now merging into a universal verification methodology which is more and more open source so that's a history of how the methodologies evolve. Uh, currently, UVM is kind of the most popular methodology, though a lot of designs are still also uh, using OVM methodology for verification. So with that, I conclude this lecture. Hope, for, hopefully, you got an idea about the general concepts about verification methodologies, how the verification methodologies evolve, and why OVM and UVM are the two most popular methodologies used as of now in the industry so with that in the future lecture we'll start learning more about uh, OVM and UVM both of the methodologies has like a lot of things in commonality so thank you for attending this lecture